Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusk. We're here for another edition of the show. All right, so um, more Pasqua. So uh, my friends over at Creative Palette again sent me the wine. So last week's wine came from Kate. This wine comes from, uh, from Jane. So again, ladies, thank you so much. This is the 2015 uh, Amarone Valle... Uh, sorry, let's, let's get this correct. This is the Amarone della Valpolicella. Uh, from Pasqua, 2015, uh, suggested retail price is 50, is in five zero or five zero, I guess. Yeah, from your perspective, uh, dollars. And um, I had some of this last year at Provine with them, so I'm super excited to do this again. So, um, so a few notes about this. So they say it's from the Valley of the Gods because the area that the grapes are coming from is an area called, I just lost it. Now, where is it again? Uh, Val Pentena. Um, they said that it's the name is thought to originate with ancient Greeks who thought, uh, who dubbed the area Valley of the Gods. Um, there are five different vineyards that are, they source the grapes from. So they are, Poiano, Roccolo di Mozzole, though they said they have Mizzole later on, um, so, but Mozzole, San Felice, San Pietro di Lavagno, and Trignago, 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 yes, Trignago, I think, T-R-E-G-N-A-G-O, we have that G-N next to each other, it's that kind of that, like, Nia, like, lasagna, not, Lasagne, well, like, it's not lasagna, lasagna, right? Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like the tilde over, over an N in Spanish. So the G is mostly silent. Anyway, uh, like Alianico, but that's A-G-L, not Aglianico. Anyway, it's a little bit weird with, with Italian, the G, it can be silent, sometimes it's not. And it's almost, is it always a hard G? No, because Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah, yes, it, it could be a J ja or a G, so it can be a hard or a soft G. Anyway, um, so enough of that. So yeah, five different, five different vineyards. Um, they also uh, dry out the grapes because that's what Amarone does. Now, in this, in their text sheet, they had said only it says a, de a decrease in volume of twenty-five to thirty percent, but the other wines are about about well, they say fifteen to thirty percent. But they, they had the notes for Amarone says is up to, well, I guess it doesn't have to be 60%, but you have up to a 60% reduction in volume. But that's okay. Um, basically, it takes more grapes to make a, a passamento style wine, which is what Amarone is. Or in the case of the other ones, it is an, a passamento style, but they couldn't put a passamento on it because it doesn't quite meet the legal requirements. Um, so, yeah. And then um, it has to be handpicked. Um, it says uh, only bunches spaced sufficiently apart, featuring unblemished, bruise-free fruit can be selected to facilitate airflow and avoid rot during dehydration. So yeah, it's it's a costly uh, production. Now it says um, they usually do the pressing near the end of the year, followed by fermentation for twenty-five to thirty days. Uh, at the end of alcoholic fermentation, the wine is racked and transferred to steel tanks for malolactic, and then it's aged in barriques for 24 months. So let's go to the text sheet, because the text sheet says eight, aging 18 to 20 months. So sometimes, you know, the information doesn't quite translate, or not translate, but like get carried over properly. Uh, alcohol is 15% instead of like 16 and a half. Uh, that's by design. 
uh, acidity is 3.4 pH, 6 grams per liter total acidity. Um, so even though the pH is a little bit higher, the uh, total acidity is actually a little bit higher too, which is counterintuitive because the higher you go in pH, the lower the acidity. But pH is not an absolute um, measurement of acidity. It's, I'm not going to go through what pH does with acidity, but it's a relative, it's like a ballpark figure. To get acidity, you need to actually measure the actual acid, not the um, hydrogen ions that you're doing or something like that with pH. And total acidity usually in Europe is total acidity, like all the acids together, what their grams per liter are. Whereas in the United States, total acidity or TA is usually tartaric acidity. But it, without knowing exactly how they mention it or measure it, you don't know. But tartaric acid is the absolute main acid in grapes and in wine. So if you're not measuring all the acids, that's it's, it's fine. Uh, residual sugar, 10 grams per liter. So slightly higher. Um, actually, this is, I think it's the same, uh, I think it's the same residual sugar as the, uh, the red from R R the red Romeo and Juliet one. All right. So let's check it out. 2015. So it's got a little bit of age to it and also the bottle. Yeah. You're starting to see the oxidation there too. I did mention that some of it's aged in large cherry, right? I think it's in this one too. Oh, that's plain. I don't need that much. Uh, the grape breakdown is 65% um, Corvina, which is usually the lead grape in Amarone. Um, Ron Donnell is 25%, uh, Corvione and uh, Negata. Um, so Ron Donnell is 25%, Corvione and Negata is 5% each. So let's go back and just double check about the aging in oak. Um, maybe not. Yes, sorry, I didn't mention it. Aging is mostly in French oak with a small portion of wine matured in large cherry uh, botte. So yes, fermentation in stainless steel versus oak minimizing oxygen content. So the oxidation is really coming from the uh, maturation process and then whatever is in the bottle. And then the, yes, lower alcohol content. All right. So let's check it out. So there's this richness. So Amarone means bitter. And they talk about in the, in the description that Amarone should be a bitter wine, not a sweet wine, because there's a sweet wine um, called Ricciotto uh, di Amarone, which is a sweet wine. Maybe not like sauterne sweet, but a sweet wine. But when you drink Amarone, even though it's a bitter wine, it it's so ripe in the fruit because it's raisinated fruit. There's a concentration of sugars. It does come off not dry. So there's a difference between bitter and dry. Okay. It's a subtle difference, but there's a difference. But yeah, the fruit is really lush. Um, there's a like a like a fruit pie, like a blackberry pie. We most mostly black fruit, but a little blue fruit on here. There's a touch of oxidation, not quite orange, but there's a touch of oxidation going on there. And I see it more when I look down into the glass, it's like a browning to it. But when I look at it, it's not as brown or orange. But yeah, again, a characteristic of Italian wine when you're trying to figure out where a wine comes from. Now, this doesn't mean you can't have old Bordeaux or old Burgundy or, or old like New World wine that's like 10, 15, 20 years old and you see that type of color. But when you see the color, there, there's kind of a difference. Like it's not orange necessarily, it's more brown when it's really like older wine. We're talking like that 15, 20, 25, 30 years of red for red wine. When it's Italian, and like I said last week about like Rioja, it's at five-ish to 10 or whatever. It's, you get that orange tint, especially Italian wine, it's that orange tint that eventually turns brown. So yeah, anyway. 
and maybe it's because I know it's in cherry wood for a little bit or a portion of it, but there is a, there is kind of a cherry aspect to it. There's a bit of funkiness to it. A little, little, little poopiness, not quite Bordeaux poopy, but you know, but yeah, a little tar, got that tar again. All right, let's, let's, taste this thing. So let's talk about the Amarone name and the bitter. If you've ever had an Amaro from Italy, especially a, a darker red Amaro, um, like Fernet. So if you've ever had any Fernet, but Fernet Branca is like the, the brand everybody knows. It's got a little bit of that in there. So it's, it's got the fruit and it's really ripe on the fruit, like in that dried out raisinated fruit, but there's a drying out and it has a bit of bitterness to it, right? So it holds the name. When you swirl it, you really see that orange and browning too. There's a prune, a prune aspect to it, not just plum, but a prune aspect to it. Raisins, really dried fruit, potpourri, but almost like, not quite just like dried flowers, but more like dead desiccating flowers. I mean, and these are all good things, right? I mean, this is what should be there. You know, there's there's um, not that fresh potting soil like I had a couple weeks ago from the Empathy Red Wine, but like, oh, a, Earth that's got some funk to it, got some mushroom type of thing, you know, it's got some forest floor, you know, maybe that maybe the leaves are decomposing a little bit. There is like a liqueur um, kind of feeling to it licorice black licorice again I, i'm it's probably going to use that i'm probably going to use that description a lot more often because i heard it today i was like oh that's a good description for stuff and i'm getting it in this wine um yeah there's a little bit of bitterness to it the tannin isn't terribly high but it, it's telling you it's there it's like really like up here on the on the tops of my gums it's kind of going hey man i'm still a dry wine i mean i'm a tannic wine maybe not a dry dry wine but here's the thing like the acid isn't like super high. It's not, you know, it's a little bit higher than medium, but that sugar is really balanced by the bitterness and by the um, acidity of the wine. This is really good wine. Now, is my favorite Amarone? No, but it's a really good Amarone. Like I've had other Amarones in this price range that are, that are really good. I think this is a good Amarone. I think it's appropriately priced. Um, Amarone is expensive anyway. I think the cheapest Amarone I've seen in general is around 40 bucks. I don't think it's necessarily a $40 Amarone. But, I mean, it's, it's priced exactly where it should be. And the more I drink it, the more I taste it, it's just like, there's also this, there's a bit of, there's a bit of VA, uh, volatile acidity. So again, Italian is usually where you get that from. Uh, it can happen from other parts of the world, but Italy is usually the, 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 the main place because it's expected and it's not overwhelming. It's like a little bit there. Um, there's a bit of leather, a little bit of, not quite dust, but a little bit of leather and felt. I call it accordion case, but it's not dusty. It's more like it, like it's clean. You know, there's a, there's a oxidation, honestly, to it. There's an, a feeling of older or age to it. And it's only five, like, really four and a half years, but it's only five years old. So, but there is that kind of older, desiccated little, you know, little bit, you know, uh, aroma and flavor to it. And as, as I keep 
smelling it and, and tasting it, it, it like feels like it's getting better and better. Now, maybe it's just getting oxygen. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really kind of like digging it. It could be that. You know, I haven't had Amarone in a while. And I think it's I think January is the last time I had Amarone. That was when I was up in the the Texas Hill Country Winery Symposium. I had a really good Amarone at a little tiny restaurant in Marble Falls. So um, and then the other ones I had were really more fruit driven. Even like the last one before this one, last week's, was definitely more fruit and ripe. Even though it kind of finishes dry, it was a little riper than this one. And then, of course, that, that Empathy Red was really luscious. So it might be more like my pal's kind of going, hey, yeah, let's get back to what you really like, which is Old World. Yeah, it's good wine. I think you should buy it at 50 bucks. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Um, if you want to help me out, the best way to help me out is to click the subscribe button, click that like, click that like, uh, tell your friends about it. If you want to send some money my way, there's a PayPal link in the description uh, below. If you want to buy some equipment that I use, that I use on a regular basis to make this podcast, definitely uh, uh, Amazon links there. Uh, if you want to know how to do what I do, the behind the scenes, uh, the behind the scenes channel that I started uh, a few months ago uh, is should still be up and running at this point. I have to record some more episodes tonight of that. And um, I mean, remember, I record a whole bunch at once. So when I say tonight, I mean literally like the night I'm doing it, not tonight, the, the day that came out. Um, so yeah, and uh, you know, links above to friend me up, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time.